My name is Bob Johnson. I'm a retired structural engineer, and I've been doing these presentations on structural engineering for over 30 years. I thought it'd be a good time to start recording these things to show uh, children, students, and even the parents what structural engineers do. Today we're going to be talking about materials that engineers use to build bridges and buildings. I think you know some of them. Wood or timber, masonry or bricks, and structural steel. Today I'm going to talk about another material that's used in bridges and buildings. 30 years ago when I started this I would bring out this picture and show the children what this truck is that we use to build buildings and bridges. More recently I was gifted with one of these trucks with the rotating drum and I show the children what this truck is and I ask them what type of truck it is and invariably they'll tell me it's a cement mixer whereupon I tell them let's go back 50 years ago when I was in engineering school at IIT and I sat down with my fellow classmates in a course to talk about how we design. The professor walks in and he says, you know these trucks with the rotating drum, what do we call them? And invariably my class, fellow classmates volunteered that it's a cement mixer or a cement truck. Whereupon the professor said, Gentlemen, I'll never forget it. He says, gentlemen, if you ever call this a cement mixer in my class again, there's the door. This is a course in concrete design. We're going to teach you how we manufacture concrete in this truck and how we design with it. So now today, when I talk in my lectures to children, students, and even the parents, I ask them what kind of truck this is, and invariably they all say it's a cement mixer. And I tell them, no, it's not. There's actually four ingredients that go into this truck. And I try to get out of the kids, the children, the students, what are those four ingredients, just as they, my professor talked to us 50 years ago. So the children generally volunteer. The first ingredient is rocks, whereupon I say, yes, that's the large aggregate. We need to see something smaller than the large aggregate. What do we find on the beach? And the uh, students come up with sand. And I say, yes, clean sand. Now we've got the big rocks, the small rocks, the large aggregate, the fine aggregate. And we need something to mix it up with. And generally, I get out of the children water. And I say, yes, clean water mixes it all up. Finally, we get to the fourth ingredient. What's the fourth ingredient that glues the rocks, the sand, mixes up with the water? And that's generally where I get everybody stumped. And I go, what's, you just said the name. What, what did you call this truck? And I, they come up with the name cement. I says, yes, cement is the glue that glues the rocks, the sand, mixes up with the water. It's not a cement mixer. It's a concrete truck or a concrete mixer. It mixes up the large aggregate, the fine aggregate, the water, and the cement that glues it together. This is the engineer's baking machine. I tell the, the parents... The mothers, this is our cooking machine that actually bakes in here and gives off heat. And there's various types of recipes that we have in making this concrete. It's a really science art to be making concrete to get the right consistency, the right strength. It comes in all different types of recipes. So I bring out these two samples of concrete. I can't show it to you here, but I have the kids 
feel the weight of these and they'll come up with the fact that this one weighs a little bit more than this one. And then I show them, this one's got the uh, aggregate in here that's fly ash that's a lot lighter than this. So this is normal weight concrete. This is lightweight concrete. The lightweight concrete's used where we want to reduce the weight of the structure. Again, all kinds of recipes. Here we have another test cylinder. If you notice the openings in here, this is porous or pervious concrete. We can use this in pavements for driveways, uh, parking lots, where cars can drive on this, but the water will go through it. Again, like I said, all different types of properties. Again, in this one here, you might not see any rocks. This was a special mix we used on a project. It's got three ingredients. Cement, water, and air bubbles. 30% air bubbles in here to make this really light. This actually will float. As I said, it comes in all different types and various strengths, depending on the use. Here we have a test cylinder. We put this in a machine to check how strong this is. And if we put it in the machine and push it hard enough, you can see here it starts to crush. Now concrete is a unique material unlike some other materials. It is really good in compression, pushing like this. But if I was able to pull it apart and put it in tension and pull on it, if this was concrete and pull on it, you'd find out it would break. So engineers discovered we have to strengthen the concrete in tension. Concrete has about nine times the strength pushing on it like this than pulling it apart. So engineers have to come up with ways to reinforce it for tension. We put these bars in the concrete to strengthen the concrete. You'll notice this one here is a black uh, steel. This one's colored green. Actually, this is epoxy coated rebar to protect it from rust, rusting. So engineers, when they're designing for concrete, have to make sure wherever the concrete goes into tension, we have these rebars. And that's what I learned in that class 50 years ago. First, how to make the concrete and where to put these rebars in the concrete and the proper amount of rebar to hold up the structure. So, you learned a little bit about concrete today. I hope you will not call this a cement mixer anymore. And when you go out and play on the outside and walk on a concrete sidewalk, not a cement sidewalk. Just remember, I'm stuck on concrete. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Again, I'm Bob Johnson. Please take a look at my other videos. And I have my handle here, Engineer Guy. Have a great day.